Gordon Brown compares globalization to an unstoppable, out-of-control runaway train. But given the current global status, could this once unstoppable runaway train of change be coming to a sudden but not inexplicable halt? Today, we are going to deep dive into what impacts globalization have and can have on the world, and what it means for those impacts to go away and if they are going to. We will look into what globalization has been able to achieve and also assess its shortcomings. To start our exploration into the multifaceted concept of globalization, let's take a brief look into its history. Globalization began with the human populace migrating in and out of Africa. This occurred approximately 2 million years ago, and this was mainly presumed to be because of research availability. This was the first instance of people moving and changing and exposing themselves to different cultures and people. The next and most well-known instance was the Silk Road, or more accurately, the Silk Routes. The Silk Road, or routes, were an ancient network of trading routes, which served to connect the East and the West. So unlike its namesake, the Silk Road was not a 4,000 mile long road made out of shimmering silk. The Silk Road was responsible for many things, but most notably, it was the largest occurrence of economic globalization in connected countries, including India, China, Greece, Rome, and Britain. This meant that each of the commodities, goods, and inventions all of these countries had to offer and had access to were shared with the world. The Silk Road also brought Buddhism to China, which you can still see to this day. It didn't just bring goods. It brought a wave of art and philosophy. It wasn't just economic globalization. It was cultural globalization. The creation of the internet. The creation of the internet has been the most revolutionary advancement to the world and to globalization. It is an advancement so impactful that is it that it is intertwined into our life. It radically changed the way business worked forever, allowing speedy access to information and effective communication. Companies were connected and so were people. Social media was born and the production of everything boosted. Cultural globalization. The change and movement of ideas, meanings, values, and cultural products around the world. It refers towards creating, boosting social connections reinforced through media, food, sports, and international migration. The increasing globalization helps us connect to each other around the world among different countries and shares and expands cultures. Types of globalizations can include the globalization of food and the globalization of sport. The globalization of food, one of the more simple and notable examples on the list, food consumption is a very important aspect of culture. Societies around the world have diets that are unique and popular in their country. Each country has its own style of food, spices, and flavor added to their dishes. Whether it's Thai food, Chinese food, Indonesian food, we can all experience this cuisine in different countries. However, the culture has been impacted by promotion of fast food restaurants. Companies such as McDonald's and Burger King have expanded their industry, spreading their restaurants across the world. McDonald's has over 34,000 restaurants operating in 118 different countries. The American fast food industry has led to the decline of traditional and local diets because of the influence it has on the country they operate in due to the mass amount of restaurants. Moving on, the globalization of sport is a key concept relating back to cultural globalization and how it's impacted our everyday lives. Multiple different types of sports have been created and played throughout the years. Events hosted around the world, such as the Football World Cup, Olympics, and the Tour de France, have been shared with millions around the world participating and watching the events. These events have grown through social media, video games, and advertisements online. Sharing and engaging with these sports around the world influenced the popularity and competition which demonstrates how sports have created a community. Economic globalization. What is the connection between globalization and the global economy? international trades increasing, 
The world's overall income has increased substantially, causing the number of the world population to therefore rise out of extreme poverty. Globalization is perceived as the engine of the global economy. After World War II, the rapid growth of global trade was caused. This rise of globalization was intact because of the increase in businesses and new technological innovations that enabled easier cross-border trades than ever before, therefore causing trade values between 1913 to 2014 to increase by 40,000 percent. However, globalization does obtain its negative factors in the economic spectrum of the world causing the outsourcing of manufacturing jobs from developed nations. This is caused by cheaper labor costs within less economically developed nations, leading to an increase in unemployment rates for many blue-collar workers in those developed nations. Meanwhile, due to the outsourcing of manufacturing jobs, it provides more job opportunities in less economically developed nations. So what is an example of the impact of globalization on the country's economy? Economic globalization also enabled the migration of people globally, therefore causing the sharing of skills and enabling migrant workers to send money home to places in which may not offer any job opportunities. For instance, money which is brought back to the Philippines by overseas Filipino workers is around $31 billion per year, this being around 10% of the Philippines' GDP. The workers travel to different countries for more job opportunities, so they can earn money for their relatives that live back at home, so that they can have money for education, food, and shelter within the Philippines. Therefore, globalization, although obtaining few negative impacts, has not only benefited the economy of countries as a whole, however, individuals who suffer a lack of job opportunities within their nations. When it all boils down, one of the most important fractions of any socioeconomic issue is how it affects people and their lives, their welfare. Communities' welfare relates to their living condition i.e. how healthy they are, how much money they're making, whether they have job stability. It basically relates to the quality of life. Currently, globalization is benefiting a lot of people, but it also isn't helping a large demographic of people. This is because globalization has created a world of winners and losers, and this can be seen in the fact that there is an extreme split between highly developed nations, such as America or Singapore, and desperately undeveloped nations, with the largest clusters being in sub-Saharan Africa. It is impossible to deny that there are winners and losers, and this can be seen in the fact that out of the 28 most poor countries, 27 of them reside in sub-Saharan Africa. For having a very integrated world, we have very large socio-economic disconnects. The MEDCs many of us live in are bubbles that often benefit themselves to the expense of LEDCs. This does not mean that globalization is inherently bad and that we should cease all operations immediately. In fact, globalization is the reason we can overcome these disparities in quality of life. Take the UN Sustainable Development Goals, a key example of people using a platform that is founded on globalization to make people's lives better. They say that the bad workman blames his tools. And this is our argument. Globalization is merely a tool for change. What we do with that tool is of utmost importance. If anything, the way to assess the faults of globalization are to make more regulations on things such as exploitative trade and the state of big organizations in LEDs. Because being more interconnected allows us to fix things easier. And this is because of globalization. It's very easy for the standard people live in to go unnoticed. And it's something many people take for granted. The healthiness of globalization and whether it improves lives is a topic full of controversy. Achieving a good standard of life is something everyone, 
and the UN is trying to fight for. And globalization is perhaps the best weapon the world has to equip itself with to win the battle against inequality. The impact of globalization on the environment throughout the years have been a negative trend and will continue forward into the future. Activists have already pointed out that globalization has guided an increase in the consumption of products which has a negative impact on the environment. The increased consumption due to globalization has led to the increased amount of production of goods. Globalization has led to the increase in used transportation of raw materials through trucks, planes, and ships, which put a concern to pollution levels around the world. Ordinary driving and public transportation has contributed to the issue of pollution and has put a strain on non-renewable resources such as gasoline. However, due to the current pandemic known as COVID-19, carbon emissions have dropped rapidly as citizens around the world have been told to stay at home more often. Experts estimate that carbon emissions in China have dropped by 25% due to the current pandemic, as well as NASA's satellite image found a drop of 30% in air pollution around the Northeast in the United States in March 2020. Traffic has nearly stopped, factories and flights cancelled, more people working from home. Thick smoke has given way to blue skies and studies have suggested that Germany may reach their climate goals as the current pandemic causes the economy to produce less CO2. Although this may be a temporary change until the current pandemic will be cleared and everything will revert back to being normal. Although globalization does cause a loss of culture, cause negative impact on the environment, and cause negative economic impacts to particular countries, overall globalization strengths in causing the diffusion of cultures enabling more technological innovation which can help create more sustainable living and the benefits on the overall economy as a whole outweigh these overall negative impacts. But where is globalization heading? And where is it leading us? With the occurrence of the global pandemic COVID-19 and the non-stop rise in cases and deaths, globalization is slowing down, with countries increasing restrictions and lockdowns, causing decrease in trades. These causes a repercussion on businesses whose well-being depends on economic interdependence that occurs through cross-border supply chains. This permitted public consciousness on the fragility of those global supply chains, bringing into question the importance of maintaining domestic productive capacity. This causing an increase in people repl- relying on local suppliers, even if the prices are higher. And although trade still occurs, COVID-19 has now had a larger impact on the migration of people. Globalization also receiving backlash due to the migration of people being a key contender in the transfer of this now global virus. However, with the media and how connected people are digitally in the world, is still so connected even with the travel restrictions and lockdowns is believed that rather than coming to an end, globalization is suffering a temporary halt in which will alter the contours of globalization, causing long lasting impacts with the occurrence of the corresponding ideological and economic backlash. Globalization isn't coming to an end. But what in particular is going to change on the corresponding ideological and economic backlash? And how long until these changes will occur?